Hello everyone, I'm back with another video today, a guide this time around for the solo lane. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 gods in solo and their builds. Now I did make a tier list recently, so you can kind of already guess what the top 5 are going to be based on that tier list. But I kind of wanted to break it down a little bit more and uh, show you guys the builds just so some new players or some people trying to transition to solo lane. Because I've gotten a lot of messages lately saying uh, that people have been starting to try solo lane, like it more based off my videos, which is really cool and um, it's really encouraging and I, I appreciate it very much. I also appreciate all the support on my new setup. Um, I really do. I'm very excited to be streaming and making content from here. Um, yeah, I love it so far. So thank you so much for that. Um, but yeah, let's get um, basically right into this video. So I'm just going to be in the God Selection screen, and we're just going to do a whole one take, try and get through this as quickly as possible, um, and go through the top five, and I'll just break it down through voice commentary. Um, starting out at number five, I'm going to be throwing in Achilles at number five. Now, keep in mind, I'll just go ahead and preface the rest of this video with this. Um, they're going to be in order, and it's it's just my comfortability with the gods and what, what I think is uh, best as far as winning the lane, not getting bullied, and their transition into late game and everything, trying to take in all those factors. Now, for you personally, you may put, like you may be putting Achilles at number one because you just really enjoy Achilles, and that's perfectly fine. If you're really comfortable on him and you like all the matches with him, then keep doing that. That's your number one. But for me, I'm just ranking him in this order. But I highly encourage that you try every god out in the top five because I do think these are probably your top five most impactful gods in solo lane going into season seven with these specific builds. So yeah, Achilles number five, not really too much of a surprise that he's in the uh, top five considering he was so good last season. There hasn't really been too many changes. He's gotten nerfed a little bit, but some in some ways he's also gotten buffed. Um, so yeah, Achilles number five, I'm going to show you guys this build. Starting out, Warrior's Blessing is just too OP right now. You're going to see it in every single one of these builds. There's going to be a little bit of leeway and like uh, some builds I'm going to show you, but Warrior's Blessing is kind of just the go-to. Um, if you're not too comfortable as a solo laner, or you just kind of want to get a uh, standard build that will, will never go wrong really, you can always just go Warrior's Blessing, Chalice, and Multipots. Um, you go four Multipots or three, whatever you're more comfortable with. The thing is, this is just a really um, good standard catch-all build where it's good in every matchup. Um, it gives you so much sustain, it's going to be hard for you to get out traded really hard and not be ready for your blue respawn. That's what's really important about it. And, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, it's just so good. You can't die with this. You just have so much sustain. Keep in mind that it's multi-pots now instead of health pots because the health pots don't stack with the chalice. So, um, multi-pots is the way to go to get the, the double stack of uh, pots going. So, pretty standard. But if you're a little bit more comfortable or you're just looking to try something new and see if you can work with it then you can go tier one glad shield and just three health pots keep in mind that you won't have a chalice at the beginning of the game with this so you should be buying a chalice later on because chalice is very useful for all stages of the game so you want to be going chalice at some point but you can try going this uh, these are pretty much your two standard builds the other one you could do there's not really a point of doing this considering um you can always just go extra pots just to be safe but if you're just really comfortable and you like rushing boots as soon as possible and you're uh on the a little bit more risky side, then you can go for this. This move speed is kind of useful in, for trading in lane, getting sticking to people with your auto attacks and for running away if you need to do that. And of course, our standard starting relic is teleport. I've been messing around with going blink first. I think blink is an option on a lot of gods, but the catch-all um, number one relic starting out is teleport. It's just too strong for getting your power spikes and everything. The reason I'm explaining the uh, starting build so much is I'm going to do it on Achilles and then not really have to explain it on the other gods because it's all pretty much the same starts. Is Warrior's Blessing is too OP. Please nerf it. Change it. Please. Thanks. So yeah, that's kind of why I'm explaining it so much right now. But going into uh, Achilles' actual build, pretty standard, pretty similar to last season where you're going to be going Glad Shield pretty much every game. Glad Shield's still a pretty good item. It got nerfed a little bit, but you know it's still a really good bridge, bridge item. It's really good in lane, and it's still good in the team fights. so it's kind of what you're going to be building. Something a little bit different I think you can be uh, trying out with Achilles now is the Cat Shield. Cat Shield you're going to see in a decent amount of builds in this video just because I think it's pretty good. Just based off the base stats, it is 2,500 gold. Let me try and grab it again. I don't think it will show. There we go. No, it's not showing. I want to see the stats. Do I have to hover over it? Do I have to take it out? I think I have to take it out. Okay, here we go. So the stats, 30 power. That's really good. 35 of each brought 100 health. Decent amount of effective health. And of course, even more effective health in the passive because you get increased healing, which is really nice. It's 2,500 gold for all these stats. Pretty good. So if your god has a heal in, uh, in their kit, I definitely recommend that you try this item out. It's also a good bruiser item, and bruiser items are really nice on Achilles because you can go into armor stance. Now, depending on what the, the magical situation is, 
I'd be going into Urchin next. If they have like a double mage, maybe you can go Runic Shield here and then an Urchin or something like that. Um, but either the Urchin is a really nice item to be having here. And then I'd be probably going something like Void Shield so you can transition in a little bit more damage late game. And then last item, Mantle, because Mantle is just kind of another catch-all item that's just good in pretty much every situation and kind of makes you really tanky. We'll take out the Warrior's Blessing, do that. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty standard build for Achilles right now. Like this, Void Shield's still good. They actually buffed it a little bit because they kind of nerfed the passive in the sense that it's not flat prot reduction anymore, which is better than percent uh, reduction as far as like a tank who's diving squishy characters. Um, so this is your build. And then you can sell your boots for kind of whatever. You can go Heartseeker um, in place of boots. Heartseeker you're going to see a lot in these solo lane builds just because um, it's kind of kind of OP. <laughs> and it'll allow you to do a decent amount of damage late game and kind of one-shot people with your abilities. And then obviously late game you can also sell your Gladiator Shield for kind of depends on the, the situation in the game. You're getting railed by their ADCs with crit, then maybe you go a Spectral. Um, you're getting owned by like a Mage, maybe you go like a Bulwark or something like that. Um, but yeah, these are, these are options. The same thing applies to the items as well as the gods. Like if you like this specific item over like let's say you like Gauntlet of Thieves over Urchin because you feel like you can like stack it pretty easily by sharing waves or letting your minions die, then you can go for that. Thieves is a viable option. Um, and there's obviously some other items that you could replace here and there, but for the most part, this is pretty much a standard build and you want to be uh, going some of these core items like Glad Shield, uh, Void Shield, Urchin I think is really, really good right now. So look to be going that. So Achilles is at number five. A little bit long-winded, but I think we got a lot of the uh, basis out of the way for that. Um, so coming in at number four, we have Osiris. So since there aren't a lot of changes from this season, uh, from last season to this season, season six to season seven, you're gonna be seeing a lot of the same gods and maybe even similar builds, uh, especially on Osiris. So pretty much standard with Osiris, you're gonna be going the, the classic. I think he's the one god where you should probably get comfortable with going this start because it's so strong on him and it'll, it'll allow you to get some solo kills and stuff like that, especially when my extra eye in there. Um, you can't go chalice, what am I doing? And you get health pots, sorry. Um, he's the one god that will allow you to have a ton of pressure early game with this extra little bit of damage because your autos will hit a little bit harder and you already are so tanky through your passive and the amount of warrior's blessing procs that you're gonna get that um, this is really standard on him. And then obviously try and save, it up, save up enough for a full glad shield and a full chalice that you'll probably have used all of these and then you can buy just a chalice place here and then you have your full glad shield definitely rush glad shield on osiris it'll make you so so annoying to deal with um not only in lane but if anybody tries to come gank you especially on osiris he didn't really see a nerf as far as glad shield goes because his one is on such a low cooldown and it's not hitting multiple people so he's still making really good use out of the glad shield for that reason um and rushing it is really nice and some people ask berserkers or glad shield on osiris the reason you go glad shield is because one it has cdr which makes you very very spammy and annoying you can heal from range you don't have to wait for minions to actually heal off of like you do with berserkers and um it really goes well with the, well with the rest of the build that you're going to be going which is or your tab eye, so good for the scaling for your abilities that are on low cooldowns, and then straight into breastplate. The only exception is if you're against a magical in lane, then you'd be going glad shield or your tab eye, runic shield, then breastplate. But you want to be rushing full CDR on Osiris, so you can always have your passive up. You can always be ulting whenever you need to, um, having your one and two up constantly with these glad shield procs and your tether for mitigation. It's just insane. Um, you're gonna be going into runic shield here, or the other option is just straight up oni hunters. The reason you do you can do this is because you can stack. Um, damage mitigation on Osiris because both these items give you damage mitigation in the passive and then obviously Osiris passive gives you damage mitigation So it's really really good for that reason um, And then last item you can go like an urchin or you can go like a gauntlet of thieves Don't get it mistaken urchin is still a good item without stacks and it's fine to go in the late game um, I would say it's even more relevant late game because you can get it almost fully stacked in one fight because a lot of times There's deicides or a lot of people dying. So um, the base item of this is still pretty good but you can also go something like Void Shield. If you don't really have to worry about too much magical def or um, magical damage late game, you can go into this. You already, you already have a decent amount through your passive in these two items. Um, and of course, if you go Runic Shield here instead of this, then you'll be going Runic Shield. Um, oh, I don't know why I deleted that. Spirit Robe here. Or Urchin. You can also go Urchin here. This would work. Kind of like that as well as the fifth item. Just maybe get the stacks a little bit earlier. And then go into Spirit Robe. Your rib's really nice, just really good combo on Osiris. And then you could even sell your, your Gladiator Shield for Oni's late game and kind of be fine with that. Um, and this would be a good build as well. Be very, very tanky with this. And that's kind of your job as Osiris. The, only, the best way for you to not fall off late game is not to build damage. You're going to get one shot and not really be able to dive. It's just to build full tank and be very, very annoying, very, very hard to kill in the back line. 
Um, so yeah, teleport on him. I like going blink on him. I guess we didn't really talk about the second relic on Achilles, but it's usually just blink. Blink is just so good right now. Now crit is in the meta, so thorns is nice to go as well. Um, so kind of be on the lookout for that, especially if you get anemia in your build because you realize that maybe they have like, you already know that they're going crit and it just works really well because they have two auto attackers or for whatever reason, something like that. But spectral is also, um, better now. Um, I think next patch they're adding this, but it's going to have health on it next patch. So definitely be looked to going that if there's a lot of crit, um, coming up in the meta. We're not really sure whether crit's going to be seen all year or at least uh, starting out. Some people are going tank shredding build. Some people are going crit. But crit is pretty good, so be on the lookout for that and for countering it with either like Thorns and Nemean or like a Spectral somewhere in your build. Um, yeah, so that's Osiris at number four. Trying to get you guys as much information as possible for these videos. Ama coming in at number three. Ama hasn't seen any nerfs or anything apart from her ult, but it, did, it they didn't really nerf it that bad. It's still one shots. She was really good at the end of last season. She hasn't seen any nerfs really as far as items because Glad Shield, she never really bought it. Um, she buys Berserkers instead. It's a lot better on her. And I just think she's a very, very good god. She's good in lane now because of her early game buffs to her too. There's nothing really... Nothing really wrong with her, in my opinion. She can do well in a pretty much every matchup. So um, you're not going glad shield. I just typed it in so I can go tier one round shield. This is another guy that I really think you should try and get comfortable on the round shield start with three health pots. Uh, but there's nothing nothing wrong at all with just going boots one and chalice or even just a bunch of pots, um, a chalice and a bunch of multi pots for that. But you get so much pressure off of this. You can out trade pretty much everyone in the game at level one, two, three because of this uh, because of this start and how much your two hits for her two. Literally, let's see if we can. I don't know if it'll show here. I'll go here real quick. Her two hits for, okay, so 70, and the full charge damage is 140, so it will hit for about, probably like 145 or something like that at level one, which is just, that's just ridiculous. That's one of the hardest hitting abilities out of any warrior at level one, so. Um, it also gives you damage mitigation, 3% at level one, but you know, later in the game, obviously that becomes more relevant. So the start is obviously Warrior's Blessing, like I said, round shield. Just throw that in here so we have a base for our start. And then her's going to deviate a little bit. She's kind of one of the only gods that does go Berserkers, and I think it's pretty much the go-to on her. Into Ninja Tab, I like this combo. Obviously, the more auto attacks, the better for Berserkers. You get more uh, healing off. But also, especially on Ama, because it stacks your passive more. Uh, your passive it stacks your two quicker when you auto attack more or auto attack quicker. And then <clears throat> it also stacks your your passive, your um, your aura, your aura damage increase in a... Uh, by having a lot of attack speed, you're going to get that a lot quicker because you need three autos to get it. So, pretty standard there. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can take Ama um, down the start. You can honestly just go straight into the the Breastplate and the, the old Runic Shield. Um, get a little bit of CDR online so that you can be really relevant when it comes to team fighting and spamming your abilities and having your ult up very often so you can dive. So you can go this route and then just go something like an Urchin into a Mantle. This is nice. You're going to do a lot of damage um, regardless with this build. You don't have a lot of Bruiser items, but you're going to be really tanky, and Ama does plenty of damage just through her CDs, so you don't have to worry too much. It's a pretty standard build. Um, Void Shield is still really good on her, of course. I don't really think you need to go Cat Shield on her. You can. Cat Shield is definitely an option for her, but you, you don't, Ama doesn't really rely on her healing through her one. She kind of wants to all in people and be as tanky as possible in the initial fight with her, her two and her ult. So you don't really rely on your healing too much, but if you do go that route, then it could, it could be something like this, a Cat Shield. Um, and then depending on their comp, you, you kind of have to get a feel for their comp. You're not going to be going CDR in this build. You kind of just have to rely more on your auto attacks. Um, but then you can go something like Mantle or whatever. Um, late game. It's pretty standard option for you as well. It's really nice, really tanky build. It looks good, feels good. Um, but again, it doesn't have a lot of CDR, so that's the only thing that's going to be a little different. You're going to rely on your auto attacks in that that first all-in with the, your ult and uh, everything. Now, Ama's the only god that you don't really need to be going uh, blink on, so... You can go Thorns. Thorns is a good option on her. Horrific, just to dive in the back line, keep their ADCs occupied as much as possible. Um, you don't really want to go Peeling Relics because you're not going to be sticking with your team too much. You can because you, she's pretty good at killing tanks with her, her Silence. It's a really good CC chain ability. Um, but Sprint's also an option. Just really keep diving really hard. And if you upgrade that and have an auto attack build, you're just going to be slicing and dicing them. So um, pretty nice option on her. And now the only other option I think you can go for is a Blackthorn. I don't really like Blackthorn too much right now, but um depending on their comp if you don't really know what you want to go right away like if you don't want physical or magical defense right away you can look to be going that and it also gives you that cdr so you can spam that um into like an urchin 
which is really nice. It's like a void shield into like an Oni's. And then you can sell your your boots and everything. Your options late game on Ama are, you don't really want to go heart secure. You can go it, but you can even go like kin size. If you want to go a little bit more damage, you can also sell your, your boots, or your berserkers for mantle. Um, for Gauntlet of Thieves, Gauntlet of Thieves is a nice last option on pretty much every god because you're going to be able to stack it up really quickly when you're around your team and all these waves are being pushed because it's late game and things are being stalled. Um, so yeah, these are your options for Amaterasu. And last but not least, I'm just going to go over one more build on her just because she is very versatile and that's part of the reason I think she's so good. You can also go the Frostbound build on her and go completely auto attack focused. Um, and I would go into Urchin after this so you can get a nice amount of defense for each uh each side physical and magical and then i'd probably go into like a void shield into a onis or a mantle or something like that um late game you don't really want to go runic shield late game runic shield is a really really good option but you want to be going get early game so if you can't fit into your build early game then uh just go a different more more tanky option late game that doesn't fall off as hard um so this would be the build on her and obviously she can be auto attack focused she can be ability focused you kind of want to be a mixture of both but depending on the build you kind of have to play around that play style Coming in at number two, we have, you probably guessed it, Kamazots. Kamazots is just too ridiculous right now. He's a big, big lane bully. You can literally win the game off of his pressure and sustain. Um, he's gotten nerfed, or not nerfed, he, he recently got nerfed. Um, they kind of just reverted something they buffed for him for no reason, his sustain. They buffed his sustain and his passive. So they reverted that, but he still has the long jump on his three. And the fact that Cad Shield is a pretty viable option right now really uh, makes him potent and annoying to deal with. He's another guy you can go round shoot on. He just has so much sustain that you don't have to worry too much. You can also just go boots um, and go into a chalice. So this is a pretty easy, simple start on him. Then you rush your boots and you have a ton of scaling and just do so much damage with all your damaging abilities. You can go this route, uh, pretty standard. Another option for him that I like to go, now you have to be really comfortable on him and kind of learn how to play around not having defense, is the charge pointing star start with um, a chalice. Or you can you could go a chalice or you could also just go three pots each plus multi-pot so you have that double stacking just in case you need that little extra survivability in lane without defense. You have so much sustain once you get transcendence that you don't even really need a chalice. You don't even have to buy a chalice later on because then you'll have your full transcendence. And if you go this route, then you're going to be going into um, transcendence into boots into cad shield. I really like this just because you do so much damage with this build and you heal for so, so much. The only time I probably wouldn't go this is if I'm against like an Osiris, an Ama. Uh, maybe maybe an Arthur or maybe a Jorm. Just any guy that can really, really hard pressure you early game that can pretty much solo you if you don't have Warrior's Blessing or uh, any defense in the early game. So that's the only time I would be a little bit cautious with it. I'm not saying I wouldn't go it, uh, but I would maybe uh, be less inclined to go it if I wasn't too comfortable on it, like some, maybe some of you are. Um, so then I'd be going into Urchin. You kind of don't want to fall off too hard late game, so this is where you want to be transitioning into those damage items like I talked about in my tier list video. And another reason Cam is not so good right now is he makes really good use of these of these uh, um, assassin items that are just so potent right now because he has so many damaging abilities. And he can go into the air and kind of just immune stuff and not have to worry about having too much defense. He'll be going something like Crusher. Just on-hit effects are really nice to just help you increase your one-shot ability. And then uh, late game, you can sell this for like Mantle, and then you're gonna be sitting pretty tanky. Like you're pretty tanky with this build, especially if at this point you have your Urchin pretty highly stacked. We're looking at a good amount of defense and health. And obviously your sustain and damaging uh, ability is just gonna be through the roof. So that's an option you can go with this build, but the more standard and thing I would probably recommend more often, I put, I'm clicking X and it's not disappearing. Um, the more standard and probably thing I'd recommend more often than not, it's just going into Boots, Glad Shield. Glad Shield's still a really good bridge item. People ask, well, they're going to be building anti-heal against you, so it's kind of weird to build Glad Shield, and that's what I kind of thought in the past, but the problem is there's not really a good first option for Kamazots or any of these, like, Bruiser Assassin Solos or Bruiser Warrior Solos. Right now, there's not really good first options for us because you don't really want to go Breastplate because you want to have a little bit more damage in your build. So Glad Shield's still the way to go, and it's just a nice bridge item that will get you through the laning phase and into those team fights. Then you're going to be going Cat Shield third, which is just, this is going to be so much the same. Keep in mind that Cat Shield does not increase Gladiator Shield healing. So definitely keep that in mind. You can go high to the Urchin here if you feel like you need to get some defense. You can also go Transcendence here, so you can start transitioning into a little bit more damage in the uh, Bruiser Assassin style. I'd be going Urchin after that then, and then probably Heartseeker late game, and then um, 
selling my boots. I probably I might need some magical defense at this point, considering they may have a uh, pretty uh, strong mage. If they have like double mage, then I might be getting some magical defense a little bit earlier, but that's not going to happen too often, so you don't have to worry about it too much. So you can go a runic shield. The reason I say runic shield late game on Kamazots is just because that little bit of extra power with that all that scaling that you're already getting through all these items is actually going to be really nice. So it's not too bad to go the, the runic shield late game, but you can also go Onis, you can go Bulwark of Hope, or anything like that. And then obviously late, late game. Um, I say late, late game because Glad Shield's pretty good throughout most of the game. You can sell your Glider Shield for whatever. You could be Crusher, it could be Brawlers. Um, keep in mind with both these builds, you would replace Crusher with Brawlers if they have a lot of healing. You'd have to worry about that somewhat. So this would be the build on Camazot Solo. Or two, before we get to number one, I'm going to give a quick honorable mention in Kukulin. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Kukulin could be in your top five. He could be your number one for all I care, but um, he's just not... Not for me right now. I think he struggles still a little bit when it comes to the late game and being killed pretty easily. And he has a couple matchups, uh, just even these top five that are a little bit rough in Osiris and Achilles. So that's why I won't put him in my top five above these other gods, just because some of his matchups can be pretty bad. So for Kukulin, this is my start. I pretty much go every game on him, just Boots and Chalice. Um, now you can rush Glad Shield as well on him if you want to do that, or Berserkers if you're more comfortable with, that on, uh, with Berserkers on him. Kind of have both options. I prefer just rushing straight into boots so you can get a ton of pressure with that. I think it's really nice. You don't have to get credit for your blue. What I do with Kakolin, if you see me play him on stream or whatever, is uh, I, so I sit there on the first wave. I clear the wave. I stack my rage as much as possible. I don't go to my blue, and then I literally stay in the lane. And with my Berserk, my transformation, I get pressure on the next wave and then go grab the totem because they won't be able to get totem over you um, with all that pressure. They, there's no way. So... Get the totem. You don't really have to grab your blue. The first blue isn't really not that important on Kukulin. So don't really have to worry about that too much. Use that pressure to actually get your team the totem, which is more important, especially because it's the first one. So I like going Glad Shield on him still. I think it's uh, still a nice item on him. And a lot of AoE abilities. You're going to be healing a lot, even with the nerf. And again, it's just a good bridge item for these Bruiser Warrior solos that um, you're going to be playing. Cat Shield is obviously not a viable option on him at all, considering he... Um, does not have a healing ability, so pretty self-explanatory. So Mystical Mail, I really like on Kukulin, and I think, I mean, it's kind of been a go-to item in for a long time, uh, but then it was pretty bad throughout the past two seasons, but now it's, in, I think, a decent spot. It's cost-effective. Um, the pass is really nice. You can do a lot of damage with it, so I really like going that. And I like going into Urchin. Urchin, you're going to be seeing in every one of my builds. I think it's really good. And a little bit something different, unless I have to go Magical Defense here because they're, I need to worry about their mage, I like going Pridwin on him. I mean, you can proc it very easily because you have two ults, and um, it's just really nice, the shield, and then diving even more with the slow. It's going to allow you to dive super, super hard. And then obviously at this point, you're probably going to need some magical defense so you can be going into that Onis. You don't really need to worry about CDR at this point. You have 30% here with these two items, and plus the 500 pot now gives you CDR on physicals. Um, overcapping CDR as a physical isn't really a big deal. It's a big misconception, but you don't really have to worry about it too much. I'd say in very specific situations it might be um, ineffective or inefficient, but for the most part, overcapping CDR is not that big of a deal. Do not worry about it. Do not go an item because it has CDR and you already have enough CDR, like Mantle, Spirit Rope, um, Pridwin, like stuff like that. These items you're getting for their passive and other things as well, so don't worry about it too much. And obviously late game I'd probably be selling my boots for Heartseeker if I can type it in. And yeah, this would be kind of the build for him. So that's Colin at number, well, not really a number. I guess number six, you could say, but he's the honorable mention. And then coming at number one, you probably guessed it. I probably said that 10 times now, even though there's been six gods. You do the math. I'm not good at math, but you know what it is. It's Jorm. It's Jorm and Gunder. He's still just ridiculous. He's the one god in the game that you can, one magical god in the game that you can rush defense on and somehow gain damage and pressure and not be able to be out cleared and stuff. He just has too much damage, too much too much clear potential. He doesn't really have any weaknesses uh, besides the fact that he's big, so he can kind of be killed easily or ganked easily if his ult's down. But other than that, you just have to learn to play around that, and uh, he's just way too good. He's uh, he's pretty much the best at everything. He's best at pressure. He's best at diving. Um, he's maybe not the best at being tanky just because he can be killed pretty easily through his passive if you proc it and then run him down with how big he is. But honestly, it doesn't matter. He's going to be winning most of his games if played correctly if that makes sense um that's why he's number number one and he doesn't have any bad matchups um he has a couple matchups where he maybe doesn't have to get 
he can't get as much pressure as he wants, but it doesn't really matter. He is just too strong, too strong right now. And the reason for that, you're still going to be doing this. Um, you can go the tier one of it if you want to. If you're comfortable with that, go for it. You can't go chalice with this, obviously. You don't have enough gold. So you go something like um, three health pots and a multi pot, or just four more, four health pots or whatever. Um, but you can also just go straight into the um, chalice plus multi pots if you want to do that. You're in a tough matchup. Say it's like Osiris or something. You need more sustain, then you can go for that. But the the strong OP thing with him is you go this 21 health. 2100 item that makes you absolutely unkillable. You're just absolutely unkillable for the first 10 minutes of the game, or for the first 10 minutes after buying this item. Um, so you want to be rushing that. It's just completely OP on him. Obviously, we're going cooldown boots now that this doesn't have pen on it for some reason. Like, look at, wait, what is this? 20 more power, but it doesn't have CDR and it also doesn't have mana on it. Okay, like, I don't know what the balance team is thinking. That's so stupid. Um, so yeah, a little bit of uh, some options here. You can go into Binding. Binding, I think, is still um, nice as an item in general. That flat pen is still really nice for uh, diving the backline and everything like that. And obviously, you proc it really well with Drum and Gunner in your 3 and your 1 and your 2. Like, literally procs and everything. Your ult, literally procs and everything. Um, so you can go that. I actually really like going Divine on him, especially if they have healing. I mean, really only if they have healing, but healing is pretty prevalent right now. Not only through like healing abilities and healing each other, but just self-sustained. So divine's a really nice option. That flat pen's gonna be really nice for diving the back line. Um, and then I'm gonna be going into urchin. You see that in every one of my builds. Uh, this is where you're gonna be going voice stone a little bit later in the game. And the reason you go a little bit later instead of earlier now is because it has percent pen on it. And the later the game goes, the more protections people have, which means the more effective percentage penetration is gonna be. And you're gonna be selling that for something like a mantle. And then obviously you can replace boots with a nice Soul Reaver or an Ethereal if you want to be a little bit more tanky while still doing a decent amount of damage, then you go into that. This is a pretty tanky build, also very damaging build. You're going to be hitting carries for a lot with this. So um, keep that in mind. Oh yeah, Kakolin, you're going to be going Blink on. Keep that keep that in mind as well. Um, Drum and Gunner, Thorns is an option. Thorns are really nice on him. Um, just because it, it increases the amount of time that you're just going to be able to zone people out because you can one, two them, and then you can go into your ult and keep zoning them out and keep trying to damage them, keep diving, and then you can thorns after all of that and uh, be really nice. Plus, Drum and Gunner, sometimes you're going to get focused a little bit because you're so big and you have to be in the front line that thorns is really nice to just kind of return that damage and then go into your ult. If you thorns, get a little bit of damage off and then go into your ult, you're going to be in a really good spot in that fight. So yeah, you can go through your here, like I said. Um, if you don't go Divine here, I'll go through that option real quick just because not all games you're going to go Divine. Um, go to like a Binding. Same option here. Keep in mind for all these builds, the only reason I'm not rushing magical defense is because magical mages aren't very, um, they're good, but they're not the end all be all right now. They're not um, as prevalent as they once were. And the fact that percent pen is a little bit more delayed now and it, they have to wait towards the late game to actually completely one shot tanks. Um, it, gives you a little, it buys you a little bit more time. You can go something uh, like this and then I'd probably be going into the void. So now I have to worry about their magicals. A little bit more and then maybe i go sorry over here or mantle depending on the situation what i need ethereal possibly you know all of those are good so these are pretty much your core items on the yorman gunder you could go blink on him i don't really like it to be honest um you can also go something like Aegis. say they have a kraken you need to worry about that or they have a lot of magical damage where they can focus you really hard before you can get into your ult then go for an Aegis so that you can stall and delay some time um, and maybe even beads if they have a lot of CC for you. That's always an option. It's an option on every one of these gods, but for the most part, you want to have blink because your job is to dive, not to survive. That rhymed. I didn't even. I wow. just came up with that on the spot. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's the top five gods, including uh, an honorable mention for you guys with the builds, the core builds right now. Again, if you if you enjoy playing this god at number one or this god at number five, and you know you have it a little bit different, that's fine. Again, it's more just a general top five, what you should be playing going into season seven in their builds. Try it out so you can get really comfortable on it. And you won't really, you won't really go wrong with all these gods with the builds that I showed you unless you're playing it completely terrible, <laughs> which I am not responsible for. Just kidding. I actually am. Just watch my gameplays and copy me. Okay, there you go. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little, um, little guide. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two. It was a little bit long-winded, but I tried to give you guys as much information as possible because, you know, Smite's constantly changing and us content creators, us... Um, I guess guide creators and people who are trying to show you how to play the game. Um, you know, we kind of have to 
stay updated and keep you guys updated so you're not completely lost. Um, and if you are completely lost, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Hopefully the community, my awesome community, will help um, try and get back to you as well because we have a lot of knowledgeable people around us. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you want to see in the next video even, maybe a God request or something like that. And a little ASMR before we leave. I'll see you guys later.